Hi, my name is Chantelle. I use her, she pronoun. And I'm a director at the Canada Energy Regulator, the CER, and it's nice to see you all. And my name is Rowan. I use they, them pronouns, and I'm the service design fellow for my team. Right now, Canada is home to 73,000 kilometers of interprovincial and international pipelines and 1,400 kilometers of international power lines. Overall, the energy sector contributes about $230 billion to the economy and supports over half a million jobs. Regulating all those power lines and pipelines is, is the process, and the processes behind them is the job of the CER. Our work affects residents across present-day Canada, North America, and even overseas. It touches other regulators, governments, municipalities, residents, indigenous groups, and many others. The bedrock of that regulatory work is public consultation. Whenever a regulated company files an application for an energy project, it can trigger a number of legal hearings, technical conferences, and other forms of public engagement. Last year alone, over 1.2 million people accessed information about energy projects contained in our databases. And that includes people like Avery, a farmer in rural BC with a proposed pipeline project running across part of her fields. She wants to know how her crops, fields, and productivity might be affected by the proposed project. One of the key places that Avery can look for answers to her questions is a place called RegDocs, short for Regulatory Documents. It's the database that we use at the CER to file, organize, and access legal documents related to various energy projects. This includes things like project applications submitted by energy companies, letters from people like farmers and indigenous groups, and expert opinions from workers like scientists and sociologists. And that's just scratching the surface. RegDocs contains resources like multi-million dollar environmental surveys, endangered species reports, in-depth economic, economic analysis, and the thoughts, concerns, and hopes of residents from coast to coast to coast and beyond our borders. Unfortunately for RegDocs and other users, um, I'm sorry, unfortunately for Avery and other, many other users, RegDocs is incredibly difficult to use. I'm getting ahead of myself because I use this every day and it sucks. Um, it's hard to find, and once you've found it, it can be difficult to wade through a pile of legal and technical jargon to access the information you're looking for. Even people working inside the CER struggle to use RegDocs, up to and including a high-ranking employee who once described it as a soul-sucking experience. And we have many other quotes that sound like that, but that one sounded the best on stage. <laughs> It's vital that people like Avery, and frankly, as many residents as possible, are able to contribute to the National Energy Dialogue and have their say on the projects that affect them. And to do that in an, an informed and empowered way, they need the data in RegDocs. But right now, that data is difficult to find, access, and understand. So, we reached out to Code for Canada. And along with the fellowship team, we asked how we might unlock the potential of RegDocs by making it easier, more user-friendly, and more responsive to stakeholder needs. We knew that for RegDocs to work better and for more users, it would need to be redesigned with and not just for users like Avery. It was also clear that the solution would require both front-end and back-end changes, like many of the products you've seen so far. In other words, we knew that changing the way RegDocs looks without changing the way it acts wasn't going to help us. So we jumped into user research, both inside and outside the CER. Whatever we did with RegDocs had to work for external users without breaking the experience of people like Chantal on the inside. So we talked to both. We, start, we started and we ran a co-design session with users across Canada, including farmers like Avery, students, indigenous groups, and others. We also ran a design probe with CER staff across departments so we could better understand how RegDocs connects into other processes, who is involved, when and where, and identify opportunities across user groups. They also sat in on a hearing for a pipeline project to better understand the processes for users involved. Attending a hearing gave the team an intimate view of the understanding expected from those involved in hearings and the regulatory process, as well as showing how documents from RegDocs are handled at hearings. And we also talked to librarians and, ar and archivists across public libraries and museums to better understand how they manage and prevent information to the public because they're just so darn good at it and we're not. We visited special collections and an indigenous library called Wewa at the University of BC and even talked to a library in rural Australia that co is co-creating a new classification system for their files with local indigenous community members. The team tested iterations of RegDocs with seven internal users as they went to ensure that things weren't breaking for people who worked at the CER and 11 users outside the CER living across present day Canada from Vancouver to Regina, Toronto to Miramichi. 
This breadth of research throughout the project gave the team a library of insights used to inform their work. A lot of what we heard resonated with us and made us sad. It's hard to hear that people are struggling with a service that's so important to the work at the CER. We heard things like this very common user journey. It starts with, I have no idea to even begin, and leads to, right now it's searched as a keyword and pray. And like many people, this ended off with, I'm just going to choose a document because they're not labeled. This cycle simply re repeats several times as we rarely observed users finding what they were looking for in the first go. Based on our conversations with users, staff, and stakeholders, we identified three pillars that would guide our work in RegDocs. Consistency, context, and generosity. Consistency ensures that we give people similar experiences across time and space so they don't get lost in interactions. Context reminds us that although some users completely understand what's happening around them in RegDocs, many need at least some context to help them navigate and interpret. Generosity is about being open with information, actively giving it out. This applies not just to how we change RegDocs to better serve users, but also how we act as a team in relation to those we work with. With these principles in hand, we set about testing and prototyping changes to RegDocs. We started with the home page. Previously, when RegDocs arrived at the site, there was a title, two search bars, and a whole lot of links, like so many links. Users like Chaya, a student, tried using RegDocs as a resource um, for a project in their ecology class at school. But searching RegDocs was difficult. They tried a few keyword searches but quickly gave up. RegDocs had all the information that Chaya needed, but just because something technically works doesn't mean they could actually use it. So we took what we heard from users like Chaya and started iterating on the product. Now the landing page looks a bit more like this. We added welcome text to help onboard the user and orient them on the web page. We know that users aren't always sure what to do when they arrive at RegDocs, so we consolidated the search bars and added some narrative text to guide their initial searches. Now looking for information on RegDocs behaves a bit more like how a human would ask questions. Being more generous with information and providing structure and context makes it more comfortable for users like Chaya and others to interact with the database. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I just skipped the rest of your text on this. Please continue. That's OK. <laughs> <laughs> we also created narrative-based paths with descriptions on the front page and results page with similar format, as well as removed features that were leading users down confusing paths and into dead ends. And this consistency and context led to a more friendly experience. This is important because we lose a lot of RegDocs users out of the gate, but many users aren't like Chaya. They aren't students doing projects at school who are able to access other resources. Often, this is the only option for them to participate. Many users contact the CER for help, but getting staff into field support is a very high transactional cost. And on top of that, we really want people to be able to find information on their own without needing to ask us for help. By opening up opportunities and smoothing over stumbling blocks, we're able to start people into RegDocs on a better footing. Another problem we identified is how RegDocs displays search results. Right now, it's hard to understand what documents within the results are relevant for users. There is very little context, and there's no option to sort by relevance like Google does. Instead, things are sorted by date as a default. And in addition to that, it's hard to tell what individual documents are about. Their names are difficult to understand and use inconsistent naming conventions. There are descriptions, but they pull from the first few sentences of the document, and users told us that that is not very helpful. On top of that, you just needed to download documents in order to see them at all. There was no option to preview files. This is a big problem for people searching around on RegDocs, and is a particular has a particular impact on low bandwidth users, like some living in rural areas, who might not be able to download huge documents on a whim. We experienced this firsthand in our very first interaction with RegDocs on one of our first days on the fellowship, when we crashed our developer's computer by accidentally downloading a 900-page document three times. <laughs> this can be a big problem for users like Avery, who leads a busy life and lacks the connectivity of those of us in big cities, like Toronto, Calgary, and Vancouver. She needs to be able to find the information and easily tell what's relevant to her life. We want to avoid situations like the one we heard from users where they said, I cannot find a clear statement of what the information represents. So what did we do about it? First, we cleaned up the ways users can filter results because we noticed that users who used filters were way more successful at finding than those who weren't, but only when they weren't turned off by falling into dead ends and usability traps. 
We made the filter options more robust, removed some loops and dead ends users could fall into, and made the filter more discreet to help support mobile access. We also created an option able to preview files right away, and we gave users the option to start to sort results by region so they can find things most relevant to their lives and locations. Providing better document features like this really helps people understand what's going on around them, because files on a computer aren't like a book you can pick up at the library where you can look at it and say, this is what I need. You can look at it and say, no thank you, and put it back on the shelf. Changes like this are important because like many departments in and outside of government, we are constrained by a lot of technical challenges. Because we cannot deliver search results in an easy way like Google does, we need to provide easy and cheerful tools for Avery and other users to find information on their own terms without needing to reach out to the CER. We also know that once users find information on RegDocs, they can struggle to find related information. And they can't, like, it's not just that they can struggle, they do struggle, it's almost impossible. You know when you're at the library looking at a bookshelf and you find a great book on gardening, and then the next shelf there's another amazing book on gardening? RegDoc doesn't work like that, not at all. If you find one, yeah, haha, <laughs> yeah, it's good. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, the, we're gonna keep going. If you find one thing, it's incredibly difficult to find similar documents. It's basically like a library antithesis. And other documents about a specific project in a region or about a topic are also very, very difficult to find. We know this is a problem for lawyers like Vivian, who uses RegDocs to search for documents as she supports her clients. Even with a specific document number, it's very difficult to find related files. We want to help Vivian be a strong, informed advocate for her clients, and that means not spending unnecessary time sorting through search results on RegDocs and downloading documents without even knowing if they're what she's looking for. We talked to users and our experts, librarians, and we were asked, discoverability happens through access points. How do you provide entry? And it's true, right now there are very few doors into information in RegDocs, so we set about finding how we could provide entry points into and paths through the information. A way we came up with to help solve this is by giving users the ability to look at documents and a pro about a project collected in one place and broken into easy to understand sections. This gives users like Vivian, Avery, and Chaya the ability to break down big blocks of information and get a bird's eye view on what's available to them. They can look at a project broken down, see quick links about things, get easy facts if that's what they're looking for, move on if what's needed, or take a deep dive into information. But the point is that it's their choice and they can do so in an informed way knowing what's ahead of them. For example, an energy project can take up to two years to go through the regulatory process, with potentially thousands of documents associated with each stage. So one of our more recent prototypes is a timeline view that lets users look, look at and explore documents pertaining to each stage of a project, laid out, easy to understand, and easy to walk through. A hugely important part of the team's work on RegDocs involved the systems that work with and support it. A lot of their work happened in places like you just saw, in the front end of RegDocs, where users interact with the system. A lot of work also happened under the hood, where users never see, but where what happens impacts them deeply. We concentrated a lot of our under the hood work in metadata. For those of you that's not that are not familiar with that, it's basically data that tells us a bit more about our data. It's like the tags in Netflix that help us figure out what movies to watch when we're paralyzed by choice. Many of the changes we made to RegDocs rely on the CER collecting better metadata so they understand more about their documents. For example, the timeline view we showed you depends on being able to tag documents with the stage of the regulatory process they're associated with, or the region. Right now, that's not happening, but things are changing. Collecting better metadata lets us know more about ourselves and helps people on the outside understand what information we have and how we can help them. The team worked extensively across areas within the CER to find and connect opportunities for using metadata in ways that better serve users. And that's the goal. By improving how metadata is collected and used at the CER, we're opening doors and paths for users like Avery, Vivian, and Chaya to be able to search and engage with data and RegDocs in ways that are relevant to their lives, where they live, and the people around them. If you had asked us 10 months ago if we could have improved RegDocs, we probably would have told you it was impossible. We had sort of accepted how soul-sucking it could be and maybe even given up a little. But things are different now. Working alongside the fellows has shown us that, we, that what we thought was impossible is totally possible. We now know a lot more about how our users are interacting with RegDocs and what they need to be more fulsome participants in our energy dialogue. And the momentum from all the small changes and quick wins that we've shown you today has filled our sails. It's been really rewarding watching our partners re-engage with RegDocs and a lot of their other processes with new energy and purpose. They've adopted the principles we've developed to improve the system. They're continuing to iterate on things like metadata and discoverability. 
and they're taking the blueprint we developed for RegDocs and making it their own. We believe that RegDocs should be accessible and tangible to users regardless of how familiar they are with the system or how many power user lawyers they hang out with. We believe RegDocs should be a resource everyone can engage with, no matter what their background, level of involvement, or their goals. And the best part is that we believe we can make that happen. We're so incredibly grateful to all the teams we've worked with and around who have supported our work and the growth of our partners so that they're able to operate in a digital capacity moving into the future. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.